All right, we have already done igneous rocks and sedimentary rocks of the rock cycle. Now for that last type of rock, the metamorphic rock. And metamorphic rocks are produced by a process called metamorphism, which is just a fancy way of saying changing one type of rock because of heat and pressure. All right, temperature and pressure. Heat and pressure. There can, they can also be done by chemical changes, but for the most part, we're going to be looking at this heat and pressure. So when metamorphism happens, heat, pressure, and some of the hot fluids under the earth, could be magma, could be water, um, maybe other fluids, cause chemical changes in the minerals. So some minerals become other minerals. And the other thing is some of the minerals will also change in size or shape. And every once in a while we get these parallel bands of minerals. And it gives the rock this appearance of different layers. And we'll see a little bit of an example of that as we go through this. So the rock that forms from metamorphism tell us something about the condition under which the original rock changed. So what we can do is we can look at a metamorphic rock and we can tell based on the, um, the direction of pressure and the amount of pressure, we can tell different combinations of minerals. And really, we're going to look at two types of metamorphism. There is contact metamorphism, which is over a small area, and then there is regional metamorphism, which is over a large area. So what we have here is an example of some contact metamorphism. And we have some magma coming up from deep within the earth for some reason. And then if you look, the area around the magma is experiencing heat from that magma and also pressure. Remember, as this magma comes up, it's causing any gases that might be in here to expand and push outward. And so we get an increase in pressure right around this magma. And in this area we have slate, which is coming from the outer zone. All right, It's what happens when uh, clay-rich rocks is exposed to relatively small amounts of heat. Like more heat than normal, but you know, small amounts of heat. So it happens on the edge of this, this area of metamorphism. And then closer we have another rock called Hornfells, which is made of the same, or which was originally the same rock as the slate, but it experienced lots of heat. And so because of how much heat they experienced, we got the two different rocks. So all this brings back to the two types of metamorphism, the first of which is the contact metamorphism. And the, the idea of contact metamorphism is there is contact with magma, or cl even just closeness. Alright, closeness with magma. Like that last page with the rocks on it showed contact metamorphism. So we got these, these changes in the rocks. They were both clay with, with clay rich rocks, like probably a, um, a shale, which is a sedimentary rock made of clays. And they got changed because of the heat and pressure due from that, from that magma into either slate or hornfells. The other type, regional metamorphism, takes place over a large area, right? So it's due to, again, changes in temperature and pressure over a large area. 
And this is generally the result of a major tectonic force, seafloor spreading, um, some kind of plate movement, subduction. So some kind of large um, force of plate tectonics. When we get to metamorphic rocks, we classify them in two ways. Um, or we tell apart them by, by, by one thing, and, and it brings up like two classifications of rocks. We got the foliated rocks. Foliated are rocks with bands or planes of color. So if we have a rock here, all right, and it's mostly gray rock, but we see these little bands in here. Parallel bands. Foliated look for parallel lines of minerals. All right, and this happens under extreme press pressures when the crystals will realign to form these parallel bands or these lines. The other thing that can cause foliation is um, differences in the minerals. Sometimes there are light minerals, sometimes there are dark minerals. Depends if they contain lots of silica, lots of iron. And so we could get alternating dark and light bands, alternating dark and light lines. All right, slate a lot of times has this. Um, schist is also one. And then nice is the big one. Nice, it looks like a zebra. All right, so you might call it a zebra rock. It, it's alternating bands of white and and black or light colored and, and really dark colored uh, minerals. The other type of metamorphic rocks are the non-foliated rocks. No parallel lines. All right, we don't see these bands. Does not form bands of different minerals. All right, we might see swirls. We might see lines, but they're not parallel. They're not these nice parallel bands. Um, many non-foliated rocks often contain only one type of mineral. And so you don't get these lines. The grains don't tend to change shape. So a lot of non-foliated rocks have only round and square mineral grains. There's no changing in shape or position. And the, the main non-foliated metamorphic rocks are marble and quartzite. Marble being the one that you probably have heard of a little bit more. So just to kind of hammer home the idea of the uh, foliated and non-foliated, here is some nice, and you can see the alternating lines of dark and white. It looks almost like a zebra rock, I would call it, kind of like that. And over here we have some marble, and yeah, you can see different lines. These are just cracks in the marble. But if you look at the underlying rock, you can see different areas of color, but they're not nice and separated into these nice lines. So we have foliated and non-foliated, which are the major parts of the rocks. And that is pretty much it for metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks, all you need to know is they are made from intense heat and pressure, and you either get foliated, which have the lines, or non-foliated, which don't have the lines. That, that's all for uh, metamorphic rocks. As we continue on in the unit, we're going to start talking about weathering and erosion, what breaks rocks down, and then we'll talk a little bit about rivers. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know in class. Um, bring the questions with you to class. Even send me an email right after you watch this, and I'll try to address them in every class. Just that's how I know what, what the questions are. And other than then that... Um, all I have to say to you is have a nice night.